Hi everyone, my name is Shobhit Gupta and I'm Head of Product for AWS Entity Resolution. AWS Entity Resolution helps you to match, link, and enhance your consumer records using rule-based, machine learning-based, and provider-based matching capabilities. Today, we are going to focus on provider-based matching capabilities. Specifically, we have three different provider-based matching capabilities across LiveRamp, TransUnion, and Open Framework UID 2.0 which helps you to match your records against third-party datasets and generate advertising IDs, which helps you in downstream activation and measurement scenarios in the DSP of your choice. And we have built all of these to work just within a few clicks. So you go to your AWS Management Console, you select your S3 bucket, choose the provider service in AWS Entity Resolution Management Console, and you're off to the races. And to get started with us, we have Lisa Kramer, who is head of Embedded Identity at LiveRAM, and we have Puneet, who is a Senior Solutions Architect with AWS Entity Resolution, and together we're going to talk about how any company solves the problem of LiveRAM encoding and transcoding using AWS Entity Resolution. So Lisa, so first question to you, right? Uh, when we look at LiveRAM, like uh, what is LiveRAM? Ramp ID, why customers love it. Just talk a little bit about LiveRamp. Sure. So happy to be here. LiveRamp is a leader in data collaboration. We make it safe and easy for our clients to connect data. And we do so through three primary tenants. The first is we provide the right foundation. We allow our clients to connect fragmented consumer touch points to the best representation of a person or a household. And this drives more accurate insights and allows them to build personalized marketing experiences. Additionally, we allow for a flexible collaboration capability. Once you have that view of first party data, data is more powerful when it can be connected. And so we open up translation capabilities and the ability to collaborate within clean rooms so you can connect your view of first party data to other trusted parties. Additionally, we operate a global premier ecosystem. We have a vast network of hundreds of marketing and media destinations. So you can take your view of first party data and connect it downstream for activation purposes, all with our privacy safe identifier, the ramp ID. So ultimately, we help our clients make more out of their customer data and connect it to the digital ecosystem. Perfect. Awesome. So just to build on what's the specific focus for the demo today, right? So today we'll be demoing two things. First is the live ramp encoding service, which helps you to take your information and convert a list of ramp IDs. And then also the live ramp transcoding service that helps you to transfer from one set of encoded IDs to another set of encoded IDs. Uh, and today, you know, as I was mentioning in my introduction, customers uh, use a bunch of you know, APIs. How is this integration different? Yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, LiveRamp has offerings for our customers today in AWS through primarily API integrations. And while those are very straightforward, entity resolution really changes the paradigm for that. And it makes it really simple to manage customer data infrastructure. There's a few things that I'll point out around the benefits of entity resolution. So the first is it's through a console. And so it's a no-code way for data operations to manage the end-to-end -end process. Entity resolution has um, normalization capabilities built in and the ability to manage various schemas coming from different data sources. So it provides a very consistent foundation to bring identity resolution into the process. And then the last thing I'll point to is entity resolution operates with AWS Glue. So that opens up a ton of options for orchestration across AWS services and allows for you know, really enhancing what you can do from an analytics perspective. And so from our, from our point of view, AWS Entity Resolution allows for kind of a very consistent foundation of customer data infrastructure. And then LiveRamp Identity Resolution capabilities brought into that allows our clients to connect that data into the ecosystem with other trusted parties to really drive outcomes. Perfect. So I really love those benefits around ease of use, configurability, and data security. Uh, let's dive into a customer example uh, that can really set the stage for the demo today. So what are the customers that you see using these services and what are the typical use case across activation and measurement scenarios? Sure. So let's start with a sample company. We'll um, talk about a consumer products company. Let's call it any company today. 
And they're really interested in managing their end-to-end -end workflow within uh, their environment. Um, any company is really struggling to drive ROI mm -hmm. from uh, targeting some key segments. And they've built a team that allows for creating insights and audience models within their environment. And they've recently decided to bring measurement in-house as well. Mm -hmm. And the goal with that is really to shorten the cycle. They want to be able to understand campaign performance mm -hmm. and optimize campaigns um, while they're running. Right. And so um, any company has used AWS to build their data lake. They already work with LiveRamp to connect their data into the ecosystem. And they learned about our recent integration and are excited to understand what this can drive from an ROI perspective for them. Nice. Awesome. So with that, I'll just top line the demo that's coming up for you. We will take the example of any company's data set. And we will show how in three simple steps, any company will be able to go and convert their consumer data into a set of RAMP IDs. Step one, pointing us to where the data lives, which is usually their S3 bucket. Step two, describing for us how the data looks like and selecting the appropriate matching technique, which in this case is going to be the live RAMP encoding service. And then pointing us to an output location where we can output the set of RAMP IDs. With that, I'll hand it over to Puneet to walk us through the demo. So thank you, Shobit. Thank you, Lisa, for setting up that context. Um, as I walk through the demo here, I'll start by looking at the entity resolution page schema mappings. Um, since a cust any company customer already has their data in S3 um, as their data lake, the assumption is they have used Glue. They know how to crawl the data, represent it as a Glue table. And to your point, uh, Glue offers that benefit of connecting to a WASP ecosystem, AWS Entity Resolution being one of them, of course. Mm -hmm. So in order to do the whole encoding of PII to RAMP ID, the first step is to create a schema mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, we start by creating a schema mapping, which as the name suggests, is informing the service how the data looks like. like mm -hmm. What are the characteristics of the data that you want to bring in? What are the elements that are important for this whole encoding into RAMP ID? And what are other additional elements that they would want to use just as a pass or something that they want to show up on the output side? So let's start by creating a schema. We start by creating a schema, let's say, and we give it a name. We point where the data is. In this particular case, it's in a glue table within a glue database called Entity Resolution. We select all the different attributes. In this particular case, the first selection is to offer a unique ID, that is, every record which is identified uniquely within the entire data set, what element or attribute represents that. Next are the matching fields. You can select any of the different PII matching fields that you want to use as part of your encoding to RAMP ID. Um, I'll just make a couple of selections here. As an example, I select first name, email, last name, but it could be any, any other um, PII elements as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like I was saying before, a couple of columns to pass through. Um, things that are not necessarily required for the encoding service, but something that I want as part of my later activation workflows. Mm -hmm. So let's take an example. Age is one of them, gender is another one, and segment ID. So these are some examples of pass-through columns which I want to use as well. I hit next. Uh, on the mapping field, we on the mapping screen, we see all the input fields that the source brings. And now I'm going to tell the service what each of these fields represent. For example, first name represents first name, of course. Uh, email represents email, and last name represents the last name on the service side. We hit next. Uh, no grouping required for this. Uh, we hit one more next, and we come to the last step, which is review and create. We scan through all our configurations, and if everything looks great, we just click on Create Schema Mapping. Mm -hmm. With this, we created a mapping which is now ready for the service to understand or interpret how the source data looks like. Mm -hmm. The next step, of course, is to create that encoding workflow. In order to do that, we start by creating on matching a workflow creation screen. We give a name, let's say live ramp encoding. Again, we point to where the data lives. We point the appropriate schema that's going to understand or interpret this data. Lastly, on this particular page, we have the service access, which is pretty much the IAM permissions. Mm -hmm. um, now, you can let the service create the IAM permissions for you, or you can choose to use one of your existing service roles that you may have previously created. Uh, largely, the IAM permissions really have the ability to invoke the live ramp APIs through ADX, also have the read-write permissions on your data. Mm -hmm. Hit next. 
On the next step where we see the matching techniques, I'll choose provider services. And within providers, I'm going to choose Libram. The system checks if this particular AWS account that I'm using is subscribed to the LiveRamp APIs. Once that's successful, I'm required to enter the LiveRamp credentials. So in this particular case, all my credentials are expected to be part of AWS Secrets Manager since this is all confidential and sensitive information. So I get my Secrets Manager ID and the key in there. Lastly, an S3 location, which is in the, any company's S3 account, uh, AWS account, which is going to be used as a temporary store while all this interaction between the entity resolution and LiveRamp occurs. Mm -hmm. Think of it more like a temporary storage area. Makes sense. So I provide an S3 location. I hit next. Finally, the output location, which is again an S3 bucket where the customer any company in this case would want the output to be written to. So it's going to be an S3 location in their account. And as I scre keep scrolling further down, we see a couple of different output columns. Now, one of them, of course, is going to be the RAMP ID since this is an encoding match, uh, workflow for PII to RAMP ID. Mm -hmm. But alongside that, if we look at this particular table here, most of the PII elements are either unavailable or hidden. Um, the only elements that are available are the pass-through columns, which was age, gender, and segment ID. I hit next. Last step, again, review and choose whatever configurations you may feel to edit. If everything looks great, we click Create and Run. With this, the system goes and schedules a job mm -hmm. where the entity resolution is now interpreting the, or loading the data, interpreting it based on the schema mapping that you previously created, and also sending that information to LiveRamp to get the output back. Now, of course, this may take some time. So let's look at the output of a previous run. I'm going to switch to Athena as my query editor to just look at the output. So now let's look at the output. I'm going to use Athena. And as I fire this query on the output side, I see the result here. Uh, as expected, ramp IDs and all the other additional pass-through columns are available, but none of the PII information is on the output. This output now can be taken for any kind of activation use cases. So show it. Lisa, what do you think? Was this simple? Yeah, I think this was pretty simple. I, I would say that uh, it just took us like a few minutes to set up the end-to-end -end workflow. Uh, but I think we are still 50% there, right? We have not mm -hmm. completed the entire, uh, you know, the customer pain point here because now customers can take this set of ramp IDs. They can go to something like an Amazon ads, go and activate on this set of ramp IDs. They can completely execute the campaign. But what the problem statement was is how to mention the ROI. And ROI is all about measurement of results. And now I would love to ask you, Lisa, like what do customers do with these ramp IDs to go and do measurement, right? And how, how does the ad exposure log look like to go and customers make that match? Yeah, so for this example, with any company, they're going to receive ad exposure logs from their preferred destination where they activated that data. And they're going to be able to bring those in. Um, and those have ramp IDs included for this particular use case. Um, mm -hmm. However, when they go to look at the ramp IDs, those ramp IDs are going to be in the DSPs encoding. And so Every, every live ramp customer has a different encoding for privacy and security benefits. And when they want to measure against those ad exposure logs, they can translate those um, ramp IDs to their own encoding for additional insights and analytics. Got it. Okay. So here now, Puneet, you're going to show us how you can take any companies, uh, uh, how you can take the DSP's exposure logs, which is in a different uh, live ramp encoding and how any company translates those encodings into their own encoding space, which is their own identity space, uh, to go and measure the overlap of audiences to drive the measurement of the campaign. Now, in order for us to do that, the first thing within the entity resolution is creating the schema. Right? Since exposure logs are a different data source for us, we need to inform the service what these logs uh, comprise. So we start by creating an exposure logs schema. We point. the S3 location where the logs are. We start by selecting all the different attributes. Now on the input field side, ramp ID is the specific attribute that we are interested in. Um, as since we are creating a transcoding workflow here, uh, what we need to do is transcode the DSP's ramp ID that we have received into something, uh, into the ramp ID of our domain, right? So transcoding 
requires just the ramp ID from the DSP side, so that's what we've chosen. I can ignore all the other columns. Um, hit next. Uh, map the ramp ID to something which is the live ramp ID on the service side that it understands. Hit next. Everything looks great here. Continue with next. All the way down, we create the schema. Now that the schema is created, we move to the ID mapping workflow. Uh, the ID mapping workflow is a transcoding workflow which helps us map or rather transcode ramp IDs from one domain to the other. In this particular case, we want to transcode the DSP's ramp ID, the exposure log ramp IDs that we received into our own ramp ID. So I'm just going to say transcoding workflow. Uh, similar to what we did in the previous live ramp workflow, we need to provide all the credential information. So I'm just going to place all of that information here. And on the target domain side, since I need to transcode all of them in my domain, I enter my domain. And finally on the screen, I need to provide the specific S3 bucket where I need to use this as a staging place so that the entity service can talk to live ramp using this as an intermediate temporary storage location. I hit next. Uh, for the workflow, again, I point where the data resides on S3. So I say it's going to reside in the exposure logs glue table and the appropriate schema that maps this particular information. I can let the service create a new service role for me. I hit next. Again, I provide the output bucket where I want the service to write the output to. Uh, essentially, the output is going to contain two ramp IDs. One's going to be the input ramp ID, which in this particular case is the DSP ramp ID, and then the transcoded ramp ID, which is going to be transcoded to my domain. I hit next. Last step here, review and create. If everything looks great, we simply go ahead and click on create. Now, this creates the workflow for us. Um, unlike the matching workflows, we need to trigger this particular workflow by clicking on the run workflow. Now, as I submit the flow, workflow here, we see a new job right here, which has started. This may take some time, but let's take a look at the output uh, for another workflow which I had previously run. So I'm going to go to Athena. I'm going to look at the exposure logs output. As we see on the output side, there are two columns really on the output schema. One's the ramp ID. Uh, if you observe this ramp ID column is what I got back as a transcoded response from the live ramp APIs. And then the transcoded identifier was the original ramp ID that the DSP had provided to us. Now, if I fire a count query on this, it tells me just the overlay of what was matching between something that I had generated initially and versus what I got back as part of the exposure logs from the DSP. This kind of helps me understanding the measurement of uh, the effectiveness of my campaign that I'm running. In this particular case, it is about 7,500 odd records. Uh, my original data source was roughly around 15,000 records. So I'd say about 50% is what my campaign effectiveness measure was. But again, this is just an example. Uh, the idea is uh, entity resolution can help you create these transcoding workflows in a couple of steps, easy button, click, 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 and you're all set. Hey, thank you so much, Puneet, for that demo. That really gives us an understanding of how a customer is able to create transcoding workflow. Uh, so with that, Lisa, we are nearing the end of the demo, and I would love to understand what, like, what are your parting thoughts for our audience here? Yes, absolutely. Well, um, it was really simple to walk through the end-to-end -end setup with AWS Entity Resolution, and I think we achieved the goals that any company was looking to drive. They're looking to uh, reduce the time that it takes to uh, understand campaign performance and be able to activate into the ecosystem. And uh, with AWS Entity Resolution, they're able to set up a seamless way to manage customer data infrastructure. They're able to connect it with live ramp on ramp ID into the ecosystem. And then they're able to understand performance uh, through live ramps transcoding capability and being able to uh, unlock interoperability with trusted partners. Um, so really exciting to see what's possible from an end to end perspective. Thank you. Now to summarize for everybody in the audience, uh, I just want to highlight there are three things that we learned in the video today. Number one, how to use AWS entity resolution to describe your data through a data schema resource. Second, how to create a data matching resource where you select live ramp as your choice of identity resolution provider. And finally, how to use these different IDs in downstream applications, such as using them as activating in the DSPs like Amazon ads. Thank you so much.